In this section, we will be covering the second half of cardiovascular physiology. The first topic here is cardiac mouse side physiology. An important topic to get across is excitation contraction coupling. Cardiac muscle contraction is dependent upon extracellular calcium, which then enters the cell during the plateau phase or phase two of the action potential. Cardiac calcium then stimulates calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is known as calcium-induced calcium release. So the idea is calcium comes into the cell during phase two and induces the release of more calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This calcium is then used to bind to troponin C, which then allows actin-myosin cross-bridging to occur. So electrical excitation with calcium influx into the cell causes mechanical activation and contraction by actin-myosin cross-bridging. Cardiac muscle cells are different than skeletal muscle cells in many ways, and here are three major examples. First, cardiac muscle action potentials have a plateau phase, and this is also known as phase two, which is due to calcium influx. Second, cardiac nodal cells have a pacemaker activity. And because of this, they spontaneously depolarize. The funny current, or the IF current, causes automaticity in these nodal cells, which are seen in the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node. And third, cardiac myocytes are electrically coupled to each other by gap junctions, so that when one cell activates, it will then activate the neighboring cell by changes in voltages. The ventricular muscle action potential is shown here. This tracing is recorded by patch clamping or by taking a measurement of the actual voltage inside the cell compared to the outside. As you can see, phase four, which is the resting membrane potential, is approximately negative 85 millivolts. After the cell is activated, most likely by a neighboring cell becoming activated, the cell will undergo its action potential. And the first phase of the action potential is phase zero, or the upstroke of the action potential. In a ventricular muscle cell, that phase zero is caused by an influx of calcium into the cell. That influx of calcium occurs because of two reasons. First, there is a high concentration of sodium outside the cell. And second of all, the inside of the cell is more negative than the outside. So therefore, sodium has two reasons to come into the cell. And when those sodium channels are activated, the sodium can move in. During phase one, you see a slight diminishment of the sodium coming into the cell, and actually a beginning of a potassium efflux from the cell. So with phase one, you begin to see potassium removal from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, and a diminishment of sodium moving into the cell. So therefore, Phase one causes a slight drop in the membrane voltage. During phase two, or the plateau phase, you see a calcium influx into the cell. And the important currents to remember here are currents of calcium and potassium. The calcium and the potassium work against each other. That is, calcium comes into the cell and potassium leaves the cell. And because of those movements going opposite of each other, you see a plateau phase and the membrane potential is approximately zero throughout the plateau phase. That potassium leaves the cell and the, the calcium comes into the cell and the calcium is able to bind to troponin C and cause excitation contraction coupling and calcium induced calcium release. During phase three, the calcium stops entering the cell and the potassium takes over and the potassium leaves the cell causing the cell interior to become more negatively charged compared to the outside. This is called repolarization. At the end of phase three, a period called the effective refractory period ends. And this means that at the end of phase three, the cell can then undergo another action potential. But during the effective refractory period, the cell is unable to undergo another action potential. 
And remember that phase four is dominated by potassium flux. Remember that potassium comes into the cell via the sodium potassium ATPase, and that sodium is leaked from the cell through leak currents. The permeability of the membrane for potassium is highest at phase four compared to the other ions. This graph shows the voltage potential seen in a pacemaker cell in the heart. As you know, pacemaker cells occur in the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes. The sinoatrial node cells have a faster pacemaker potential than the AV nodal cells, and therefore, the sinoatrial node is generally the pacemaker of the heart. There are different phases to this action potential, and as you can see, the internal electrical environment changes with time. Phase four is the resting point, and phase zero is what we consider the first phase in the action potential. It is the upstroke. Phase zero occurs when phase four reaches the threshold potential. And as you know, phase four gradually increases in pacemaker cells because of the funny current. In phase zero, you can see an upstroke, which is caused by opening of the voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium goes inside the cell, therefore the interior of the cell becomes more positive, and this is why the voltage goes from negative 60 to positive 10. Remember that pacemaker cells lack the fast voltage-gated sodium channels, and therefore the calcium channels are required for this upstroke. This results in a slow conduction velocity that is used by the AV node, as well as the SA node, to prolong transmission. It's the most important in the AV node because the AV node's job is to prolong transmission from the atrium to the ventricles in order to give time for the ventricles to fill with each heartbeat. In pacemaker cells, there is no phase two. We go straight on to phase three. Phase three is caused by the inactivation of those voltage-gated calcium channels and an increased activation of potassium channels. This activation causes the efflux of potassium from the inside of the cell to the outside this makes the interior component of the cell more negative and brings the voltage down from positive 10 back to negative 60. Phase four is the most important phase for pacemaker cells because this determines heart rate. Phase four is a slow diastolic depolarization and this is caused by the funny current. This is a membrane potential that spontaneously depolarizes as sodium conductance or NAG increases. This funny current is different from the sodium channel that was voltage gated that was seen in previous cells. The funny current accounts for the automaticity of the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes. The slope of phase four in the SA node determines the heart rate. That is, the higher the slope, the faster the heart rate, because that cell with a higher slope will reach the threshold point quicker and enter phase zero faster. In general, acetylcholine decreases the rate of diastolic depolarization because it blocks the funny current and it decreases the heart rate because those cells that are bathed in acetylcholine will reach phase zero more slowly than a cell that is not bathed in acetylcholine. While catecholamine, such as epinephrine, decrease depolarization by increasing the funny current and increase the heart rate. Sympathetic stimulation increases the chance that funny current channels are open. 